Hey everybody, Arn Hawaii here in my new studio. It is a mess, but it's here and that's part of it. So uh, today I'm going to go through my favorite OBS plugins. Now some of these are plugins, some of these are actually built-in features in OBS that maybe you just don't even know are there. Um, but I'm gonna show you my favorites. These are all pretty amazing. They do cool stuff. Um, and so, yeah. Of course, if you don't know me, my name is Aaron, and I'm a broadcast producer, um, and I make these videos where I teach you guys how to do stuff. So if you have questions, you can ask them in the comment section, um, or you can even subscribe so that you find out when I make more videos. With concerns growing over the use of music when streaming or uploading your video content, lots of great moments are ending up in the recycle bin because a song is baked into oh, your content. I that. Oh, I thought maybe you do that and you with the pawn. Uh, well, this video is sponsored by La La Lay, a high quality tool based on the world's number one AI power technology that lets you separate vocals from music in your audio or video content. And after running it through La La Lay's AI power tech, I can safely upload the same clip to any of my favorite content sites without fear of demonetization or strikes to my account. Oh, what if I did that? Oh, I thought maybe you do that and you with the pawn. Uh, and La La Lay now has a free pack for splitting up to three audio clips for everyone to try before you buy. So head over to lalal.ai and give it a try for yourself. And now back to the video. All right. So the first plugin that I found most recently, I really love it. It's called Source Toggler. And it actually solves a pretty annoying issue in OBS where let's say you build a scene and you have multiple sources uh, in that scene, obviously, and you wish that you could make it so that only one of those sources is visible at any one time. So let's say I only want this one visible, but then I want to be able to switch to this one. Well, I first have to unhide that one and hide this one or vice versa, hide them all. And uh, I wish I could just click one and the other ones would just turn off. Well, there's something for that. So you go to OBS's plugins area and you find uh, Source Toggler and I'll put the link in the description and just download that file. And it's literally just a single file. So just grab that file, you can cut or copy it, put it somewhere where you think you're gonna remember. I keep a little folder on my mass storage drive where I have different streaming assets. So I've got that in there. And then in OBS, you're gonna go to tools and scripts. And then you're gonna click the plus and you're gonna target that script, wherever it was that you saved it. Click OK. And now you're gonna choose the scene that those sources are in that you want to toggle. So you'll click the plus. And now this is a little annoying. You actually have to type in the name of the scene exactly as it is in your scenes list. You can't just select a scene. And then click close. And that's it, and now I can show one source is visible, but then if I click a different one, it's gonna automatically hide the other visible sources. Now keep in mind that since I chose this scene, everything within that scene is going to behave this way, not just this group of images. Now if I wanted other types of sources in this scene as well, but I didn't want them affected by this toggling effect, then what I could do is create a group of the sources that I do want toggling. So you'll select all of those sources, create a group. Let's name the group something. We'll go images group. And now we're going to go back to tools, scripts. I'm gonna get rid of the scene. And instead, I'm gonna add the name of the group, images group, spelled exactly as it is here. And click OK, and then close. And so now, I still have the toggling effect within that group of images, but I can still control the visibility of all of the other sources in that scene without having any toggling going on with those sources. So the behavior is completely isolated to just that group. All right, so the next one I wanna show you guys is called OBS Transition Matrix. You'll download a zip, you'll get your data and OBS plugins folders from that zip, just copy those. Go to the actual program files folder for your OBS and just hit paste in here. If it asks you to replace files, just say yes. 
and then we'll go into OBS and I'll show you how to use it. Now, OBS comes with some default transitions like cuts, fades, and things like that. But if you wanna have stingers or luma wipes, you need to add those. And of course, uh, you can make them and give them a name. Uh, let's add a luma wipe real quick. And yep, parentheses two is fine. And we'll click OK. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna choose one at random and uh, say that that's good. I have a whole video on how to make transitions. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, so you can learn how to do that stuff. So I just made a couple scenes here. One is the Kame house, another one I call it beach, and this one I'm calling Mario. And let's say I wanna customize, if I'm going from say Kame house to beach, I want one different kind of transition to happen, where if I go from Kame house to Mario, I want it to be a different kind of transition. And I want it fully customizable. You'll go to tools, and you'll go transition override matrix. And once you're here, you're gonna see a graph like this. And it's got all of your scenes across the top and all of your scenes across the side. And down here, just as a key to remind you of how this works, it says rows are the origin and columns are the destination. Meaning that you start from the side. This is the scene that you would be currently in. And then the columns are the scenes that you would be heading towards. So let's say I wanna, have a transition set to where if I go from the Kame house scene to the beach scene, what would I want that transition to be? So you can right click here and let's say this one, I just want to fade. I can click fade and I can even set the duration. Let's say I want this to be a full one second fade. I'll put a thousand. And now if I'm going from the Kame house to the Mario scene, maybe I want my Luma wipe there and you can set a specific duration for that. Let's say I want a full two seconds. Set it to 2000 milliseconds and I'll click out. And before I hit close on this, I wanna note, anything that says none is going to apply the global transition and I'll show you where that is. Now, if you don't have this dock here, you go up to view, docs, scene transitions, and then you'll be able to have that dock and set your global transition. This is the default behavior in case you didn't set a specific behavior you want in the override matrix. Whatever is selected here is gonna be your global transition. So I'll leave it to cut so that you can see for the purpose of demonstration. So here we go. We're in the Kame house scene and I'm gonna to go to the beach scene and I'm gonna click transition and we got our full one second fade like we expected. Now if I transition back, it's just gonna cut because we didn't assign a transition for the path back from beach to Kame House, so it only used the global transition, which was a cut. So now we're back in the Kame House scene. Let's see if we went from Kame House to Mario, if it applies the Luma that we uh, asked for in the matrix. So click transition, and there is our two second Luma wipe. Pretty nifty tool, especially if you have a lot of different scenes with different kinds of content and you want transitions that sort of match the energy of the transition between those two types of content. All right, so this last thing is actually not a plugin that you'd have to download. It's a feature in OBS. I'm using OBS Studio version 27, uh, but it's been around for a while. And basically what it allows you to do is if you have any kind of content that has a URL, you can add it as a doc in OBS. They're called custom browser docs and you can click view docs custom browser docs, and then add anything you want as long as there's a URL for it. It's almost like embedding a browser into the OBS interface. So let's say you wrote a script for a message that you need to read word for word during your stream or recording. You could put it in a Google Doc perhaps, and then copy the URL of the doc and paste it in here. And now you can add it to your OBS interface. Just grab your doc and put it where you want it to go. You size it to however you need. And boom, you've got your script inside your OBS interface. And what's nice is if you close it, that doc is still there for you to use later. If you wanna delete it, you could just go back into there and click delete. Some people like to use it to monitor their stream or someone else's stream. So give it a name. 
and you're going to want to use a pop-out URL, which you can get by going on Twitch and clicking settings in the video player and looking for the pop-out. And then apply. That's going to isolate it to just the video player itself. And there you go. I can put the stream in there. And when I'm live, it should play here just like it would in a browser. Anything that you can get a URL to, you can make into a custom browser doc. And there you go, that's it. Those are my favorite OBS plugins. Like I said before, if you liked the video, if you found like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get this one, give my video a like so that I know that you found something cool that you were looking for. Or ask me questions in the comments section so I can help you use some of these things more effectively. I also stream regularly on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Hawaii. So you can come hang out with me live and ask me questions during my streams as well. Um, that's it. If you subscribe, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Welcome, and thanks for calling the RN Hawaii YouTube hotline. In a few words, tell us what you're calling about. You can say things like, my stream won't start, or how did you do that thing with your webcam? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Press zero to reach an operator who can assist you.